Good morning and welcome to this morning's reflection. Today we're going to be looking at entering, reading the Bible humbly. Reading the Bible for spiritual transformation is tantamount to inviting a Damascus Road experience. If we venture onto the ancient roads of the Bible's world with an open mind and an inquiring heart, we can expect to encounter the living God. All we need do is ask Saul's question, Who are you, Lord? Who are you? Scripture is filled with the promise of the Lord's reply. A third way, then, to bring our lives into the with God life of the Bible is by entering humbly. How do we do this? Well, when we sit down to read, we can start with just a few minutes of prayerful silence. We can still every motion that is not rooted in the desire to experience God's presence in our reading, waiting until we sense that inwardly we are quiet, hushed, and expectant. To help offset the tendency to focus on our favorite passages, or to jump to conclusions about what a particular passage means, I have found it helpful to read through the entire passage once, out loud. Then go back a second time, reading silently, but this time highlighting the passages that seem particularly significant. A third time, Go back and read through all the highlighted passages to see if a particular image, phrase, or verse lifts itself to your attention. This is one way of seeking the gentle leading of God's Spirit. Such humble submission to the text allows God to shape the attitude and posture of our hearts. There is a great freedom in such submission, the freedom to lay down the heavy burden of getting it right, of seeing what we think we need to see. We will also find liberating relief from trying to control the Bible, to make it come out right, Instead, as we read, we will find ourselves inwardly praying, Pour the living water that flows from Christ through the Bible into my dry and thirsty soul. God promises that when we seek Him, it will not be in vain. Transformation takes place as we discover that in surrendering to how God chooses to speak through the scriptures, we are no longer so attached to our concerns, to our anxious needs. We will want to shed them as dry husks, because they wither next to the radical freshness of life offered to us through Jesus dwelling within. Our formerly self-serving and self-protecting agendas will seem small-minded next to becoming purposeful and active participants in the kingdom of God with us. The Bible makes clear that God's primary agenda is to create an all-inclusive community of loving persons, with the living God at the very center of this community as its prime sustainer and most glorious inhabitant. 
When we read humbly in a constant attitude of repentance, that is, turning away from our own perspective to purposefully seek God's perspective, we will begin to understand the spiritual riches that God has made available to all humanity in the written word. One of the most poignant images in the Bible is of Jesus stripped down to a towel, which is wrapped around his waist, a basin of water, preparing to wash the feet of his incredulous disciples. The Gospel of John records that at this point, Jesus knew the agony of his death was imminent. In his last evening on earth, he chose to spend it humbly, loving his disciples well. Knowing that he had come from God and was going to God, enabled him to surrender his life in sacrificial service to his Abba and to those whom he had been sent to love. The Bible is the means through which we are introduced to Jesus and we are invited to follow him in this life of humility and service. Secured by the knowledge that in Christ our origin is God and our destination is God, we will yield the fruit of service to others. This is the so what of our Bible reading. Does it shape our lives in love and humility? Does it lead us more fully into life with God? When we come to the Bible expectantly, attentively and humbly, we will experience the joy of losing ourselves in the great river of life. And that is life indeed. That is what the Bible is all about. Human life eternally bound up in divine life. Even now, God is writing us into the beautiful culmination of the story. Human beings as the dwelling place of God who is fully present with them. This is the great God with us way of life. Amen.